more. In these boxes are your homebrew submissions from around the world. We're gonna get into them, share our thoughts, provide our feedback, and have a great time. What in the world? I didn't see that coming. A lot of video today, guys. Settle in, crack yourself a Julius. Out of 550 entrants, we've got eight wonderful homebrews from around the world of varying varieties. If you're new here to the channel, thank you for hanging out with us. We encourage you to get subscribed so that you don't miss out on a bunch of future content that myself and Michael and the team at Treehouse here are planning. One fun thing that I wanted to add to the tasting, I am gonna crown my favorite example that was submitted and I'm also gonna pick one that I think was the most creative. So the first beer that we have to enjoy today is from Pete Graham in Indiana who submitted a Hellas Lager. Let's see Pete's homebrew setup and see what he had to say on camera. Hi, Nate and Treehouse Brewing, and thank you for supporting the home brewing community. I'm Pete from Fishers, Indiana, nice. and this is my brewing setup. I made a Hellas Lager called Heaven Beside You, Hellas Within. Thank you for giving it a try. Heaven Beside You, Hellas Within. What a cool looking homebrew setup, Pete. Let's see what we got. He's got it right here in the bottle. Amber bottle, classic. Again, not sure if, if Pete bottle conditioned this or if he filled it off the tap. Either way, we've got his beer right here in front of us today. Got the pop top. Ta-da! Carbonation looks good, rising to the top of the bottle. Now, Hellas Lager can be exceptionally bright, but it doesn't have to be. And this, this particular example pouring into the glass looks phenomenal. Nice color, nice clarity, really pretty looking, nice appearance. Not, it doesn't appear to be overly carbonated. We're not getting a rush of bubbles and the head, you know, billowing out of the glass wasn't, wasn't too extreme, but typically what I look for in a Hellas is cleanness, beautiful, simple, sweet malt character, modest, noble hop character, and all around breadiness and delicious drinkability. Let's see what we got in the nose. Oh yeah, Peter, my man, really nice. I mean, if I open this up and this was a commercial example of a Hellas imported from Germany, I would not necessarily know the difference. Noble hop varieties on the nose, sweet malt character, exactly what we look for in a Hellas. Oh man, if this is what we, if this is what we can expect from this tasting, I'm in for a treat. Peter, this is really nice. If I had any feedback for you, I think it gets a little bit dry on the finish. I think that the body is a little bit delicate, tiny bit more specialty malt, or potentially a slightly higher, I'm assuming single infusion mash temperature could give you just a hair more of that sweetness that I enjoy in a Hellas. But this is a really nice example of a Hellas lager. Great job and thank you for sending it along. Sample number two is from our friend Noah Hamilton. Noah Hamilton is from Orlando, Florida, and Noah submitted his example of a New England IPA. Let's check out Noah's homebrew setup. Hi, my name is Noah Hamilton. I currently reside in Orlando, Florida. The beer submission I have for you today is a hazy IPA. I like to call nice. Sunshine State of Mind. The beer equipment I use to work with is right State next to me. Hope you guys enjoy it. Cheers. Noah. Great submission. I can't tell if that's Mount Cook in New Zealand or not, but that, that picture you got on the wall reminds me of some really fond memories. But great setup and let's see what you got. Classic Grohl style bottle. Always nice to see. Harkens back to those treehouse flip top growler days. Nice little pop of carbonation there. Even when looking through the bottle, wow. Holy cow. That smells spectacular. It smells like pineapple. Really nice. Super milky color. Carbonation feels a little bit light on the pour. Color's great. I'm assuming Noah's using like Gambrinus Pale Malt or maybe Premium Pilsner or something that's really clean. Probably not much in the way of specialty malt. I think the carbonation seems a little bit light here, but that could be a function of really rich, juicy hop saturation. Let's see how it hits the palate. Yeah. Ton of pineapple, mango, orange juice on the nose, very minimal sign of oxidation or mistreatment. Getting a really fruity tropical overtone that I'm 
enjoying very much in this example of New England style IPA. Let's see how it hits the palate. It hits really, really intensely up front, but it kind of lingers a little bit. So maybe increasing the sweetness of the background of this beer could benefit its finish palatability and drinkability. But really, in terms of flavor, appearance, texture, Noah, man, you did an awesome job. This is really, really impressive stuff. Thank you for sending it along. Moving on to a beer called Alaska Dreams. Alaska Dreams was sent to us by Samuel Shea. All right, let's check out Samuel's homebrew setup. Nice looking shop. Hey guys, my name is Sam from the 49th state up here in Anchorage, Alaska. Awesome. My submission today is a hazy IPA called Alaskan Dreams. Behind me is a setup that I used to make it. Looks like you've got a little barrel going on in the background. Awesome little, little setup you have there. Cheers, thank you for uh, sending this guy into us and let's give it a try. Alaskan Dreams. It's got those black, black uh, lids on it. Reminds me of The Alchemist. Softer and more rounded on the aroma than Noah in Florida. Really nice, like fruit striped gum going on. Nice. Like The Alchemist, this guy's got a little bit of translucency going on, which in the commercial market can be seen as, you know, a negative attribute in hazy IPA. But in my opinion, sometimes a beer that is translucent and is hazy but not opaque nor turbid is way more appealing both to look at and to drink. So Samuel, that is a little piece of sunshine right there. Would you look at that? Beautiful color. Again, it is translucent. I can see kind of my finger through the beer, but makes it no less appealing than a beer that's murky and super hazy. That's nice. It's got some of that like tropical hop bag thing going on in the background. It smells really clean, really nice. Kind of soft tropical fruits. I get guava and papaya. Man, you guys at home are just killing it. I'm, I didn't know what to expect going into this tasting, but so far we are tasting some really phenomenal beers and just the aroma of this guy, the appearance, the carbonation, the texture, the foam, the head. Amazing, nice job. Oh yeah, that's potent on the flavor profile. Comes across really strong. It's kind of a kind of a West Coast hazy IPA vibe. I do get a little bit of that. I call it aliaceous character amongst those tropical fruits. If you like a super dank kind of hybrid West Coast hazy style IPA, Samuel, I think you, you knock this guy out of the park. This is really, really nice. In terms of things that I might change, I'm not sure that I would change all that much. The hops that are utilized in here are not particularly my favorite. It could be a function of what you have access to, but you know, changing the hop blend to be either more grapefruit forward or lemon and pine forward for me would be a little bit nicer. But if you like that super dank characteristic that comes from Mosaic or Simcoe or hops like that, this is right in your wheelhouse. And in terms of freshness and brightness and oxidation, this guy is spot on. So again, aside from choosing a different selection of hops, I think this guy is quite nice. Up next is Jason Correa from Puerto Rico. Jason, you have sent along Little Town Hoppiness, and according to the spreadsheet, you have sent us an American wheat with pineapple, roasted coconut, and Chile habanero. Interesting. Let's check out your brew setup. Hi guys, my name is Jason Correa from Catania, Puerto Rico, member of a homebrew team called Little Town Hoppiness. My homebrew submission is a beer called La Piñeta, and this homebrew home wow. setup behind me is the one that I used to make it. Ooh. Cheers. La Piñeta. Jason, thank you for the submission. I do have one criticism though. I see a big can wall back there and I don't see any treehouse cans. We might have to make that right and reciprocate the favor. Thank you for sending this guy along. Let's dive into it and see what we got. Nice little little town hoppiness label. Catania, Puerto Rico since 2021. Nice.
Color looks good for an American wheat. Sometimes you get that kind of golden orange color going on. It's nice, translucent there in the glass. Texture seems really nice. Nice head that arises. All right. Really pretty to look at. Hopefully that renders nicely on camera. Really nice glowing orange color. Head is nice. Thick cream of foam on top there. Carbonation looks soft and tight. Nice. Pineapple and chili habanero. Not picking up a lot of pineapple on the nose. Mostly that kind of roasted coconut character. All right, there's the chili habanero. <laughs> nice. A lot, of, a lot of roasted coconut on the nose. A lot of chili habanero, but it doesn't stick around. It, it's interesting heat character, because anytime we've experimented with heat in our beer, what winds up happening is it can linger on the palate. So you take the sip, you get that hit of heat. It kind of hangs out on the palate. It kind of entices that next sip. This guy kind of hits the palate falls off and then gets, gets ready for the next sip. If I were gonna rebrew this guy, I might, I'm not sure how you added the pineapple, but for me, the pineapple character is a bit limited. So I might increase the pineapple content. Really interesting, thoughtful idea of an American wheat, Jason, and thank you for submitting this guy. We appreciate it very much. Let's go on to Clayton Rominski, who submitted his Baltic Porter for which he made a yeast starter from 100% smoke malt. So I don't believe Clayton had any smoke malt within their grist. That's pretty standard uh, Baltic Porter grist. Hop with Magnum and Saws. Use Bach lager yeast fermented at 50 degrees. Technically not a smoked Baltic Porter, but the addition of a yeast starter that had smoke, I'd be really interested to see if it created an appreciable smoke character. Clayton, let's check out your brew cave. Hi, I'm Clayton from Bel Air, Maryland. My beer is a 9.2% Baltic Porter made with smoked lager yeast from an all grain, 100% beechwood smoked malt yeast starter. Awesome. Clayton, great looking setup and uh, you know, your flag in the background of beer may help. Ain't that the truth. Here we go. Oh yeah, all right, there it is. No smoked malt in the beer, but Smokiness on the nose. Function of that yeast starter, that yeast is powerful. Beautiful black color. Clayton, what a perfect Baltic Porter appearance. Dense rocky head, jet black, no notes or bitity, no haziness to it. Certainly you had some patience when you were making this guy and I commend you for that. On appearance, I mean, it looks identical to our Baltic Porter, which we make that's called Cozy. Nice aroma. Chocolate, mixed roasted malts, dark candy sugar, some like brown bread toffee going on, licorice, really nice. Not very heavy on the smoke, very, very mild on the smoke, but what is there is very pleasant. Oh yeah, nice. It hit me up front as being relatively sort of simplistic, dark fruits, licorice. And then in the mid palate, it got kind of strong and a little bit of booze character going on and chocolate wafer cookies. And This is a really nice beer. Warming on the palate, familiar, comfortable. I mean, if you're gonna enjoy this guy, after a nice dinner, you're gonna hang out by the campfire, hang out by the fireplace. Really exactly what I would enjoy in a Baltic Porter. I think in the mid palate, it's lacking a little bit in body and sweetness. Could be a mash temperature thing, could be a fermentation thing, I'm not entirely sure. But in terms of finding flaw or making suggestions in this guy, it's really hard to do, Clayton. You've done a really nice job. Personally, I think that the smoked malt yeast starter is an interesting concept, but I don't know that it necessarily adds a ton to the beer. I would recommend uh, either finding a local maltster to smoke you some malt or smoking your own to add that really punchy smoke character if that's what you're looking for. But this is a really nice beer. Thank you for sharing it with us here at Treehouse. Our friend Dan Kadama from 
Honolulu, Hawaii. Man, isn't it amazing, the homebrew community, the amount of variety and how many people are doing this around the world. Again, we've represented Chicago, Anchorage, Orlando, Maryland, Hawaii, Indiana, Puerto Rico. We've got Norway coming up and Massachusetts. Just crazy. This community is alive and well. Let's check out Dan's homebrew setup. Here we go. Hello, Dan from Honolulu, Hawaii. Hi, Dan. I'll be submitting a dark lager. Dark lager. I brewed it with uh, this system. Nice. And I pressure fermented with uh, my conical fermenter. All right, pressure fermented. I'm not sure if that means that he's spunded uh, and there's some natural conditioning going on. Uh, sometimes we can tell, but let's crack into it and see what we got. Dan, dark lager. Looks nice and clean. Great color. You know, sometimes I'm not sure what type of dark lager Dan's attempting here, but it has a little bit of translucency. I think on a brewing scale, it's probably 24 SRM. You've got some ruby around the edges. You can certainly see through it around the edges. It's not black per se. Really, really deep, dark chestnut color on this guy. Foam is nice and white. Sometimes on a dark lager like this, you can get more of a chestnut colored head which would indicate more roasted malt usage, but this guy is really, really light and delicate. The head is nice and fluffy. Carbonation looks good. Classic, simple, straightforward. I think there's a little, little bit of phenolic fermentation uh, character going on here, which I'm not sure if that was intended. It's not overwhelming. It's just a minor, minor point. Yeah, so chocolate hits you up front. Really, really nice. I, there's some astringency on the back. Again, Dan, I'm not sure how you fermented this guy, but paying really close attention to your pitch rates, paying close attention to your temperatures throughout the fermentation may help make this guy just a bit smoother. There's a little bit of astringency on the back end, really kind of dries out, and I wonder if it's not slightly over attenuated. But it's nice, kind of, I mentioned that ruby red color. So more so than chocolate and roasted malt, there's kind of this dark fruit toastiness that's going on. It's kind of somewhere between a lighter lager and a purely dark Mave Pivo, for example. Not too chocolatey, not too roasty, and also not too light, kind of hitting those notes in between. Nice warming beer all around. Again, I'm not sure what the process was here, but there does appear to be a small amount of fermentation flaw in this beer, but I do enjoy it. And I think the recipe is really sound. And with some, some solid execution, this guy could be that much better. I'm really excited for this. Our friend Espen, all the way from Trondheim, Norway. Espen sends along his freeze distilled Imperial Stout. Let's check out his setup. Hello, uh, my name is Espen Breik from uh, Trondheim, Norway. I have submitted a free steel Imperial Stout, and this is my setup I used to brew it on. Awesome, Espen, looks like you got a great little spot there. Thank you for sending this along to us. Very, very, very excited. Espen's got his freeze distilled bourbon kitchen sink Imperial Stout. Looks like Espen has designed himself a little logo. He's even got, again, I know you guys just saw, I think this is Espen. Look at him, he's chilling on the label. <laughs> That's really cool. Let's see what we got. I don't know, is the ABV on here? It says 12% ABV, which I think is on the lower side of what I would have expected for a freeze distilled Imperial Stout, but really nice color, pouring like molten chocolate. Oh, Espen, look at that. Man, I can just imagine being in a cozy cabin in Norway Snow's falling outside, and you got Espen's Imperial Stout hanging out with you. Look at that. Awesome, awesome, dark roasted head. Clearly some roasted malts being utilized here. Got some bourbon chocolate chip cookies going on. Really nice dark fruit, that kind of prune, raisin, licorice. Carbonation is nice, the head is beautiful. This is so much fun.
Wow, there's a lot going on there. Interesting, so freeze distilled bourbon kitchen sink imperial stout. I'm fascinated. I don't know if, if Espen had this guy in a barrel or not before he freeze distilled it. Sometimes for me, like overtly roasty characters can come across as woody. So I'm getting kind of that oaky woodiness within this guy and I'm unsure if it's a function of a barrel or from a, from a roasted malt. Sometimes they can be interchangeable, but that's a really interesting beer. Like raisin, kind of like old raisin. And I know that sounds, that doesn't sound great, but it actually is. Uh, you know, sometimes you get like juicy raisins in the bag and sometimes you get the ones that are kind of, kind of older and harder, which I actually like more than the juicy ones. And this has that characteristic. Really, really nice beer. Really super interesting. You can tell there's a lot of love, care, and attention to detail that went into this guy. I'm really fortunate to have had the chance to try it. In terms of what I might recommend, it's hard for me to say. I don't particularly know the process that Espen used, but maybe a little bit more sweetness on the back end to kind of buoy those intense flavors would be beneficial in this particular guy. But I really enjoyed this beer. Fortuitously, when we were reviewing the, the submissions of the people who made videos for this, tasting, Michael happened to say, hey, that, that guy in that video is Steve, the apartment brewer. But turns out Steve, the apartment brewer, is relatively local to us, and he's here with us today to share his English IPA. Nice to see you. Likewise. Thanks for coming in. What do you got for us? So here I have my English IPA I just made not too long ago. Um, this is one of the last couple pints of the uh, actual uh, brew there. So it is uh, about 65 IBUs made with Target, East Kent Goldings, Fuggles, and then the fun thing I did with it is I actually put it on a beer engine for serving. Okay. So it is actually a little bit more bitter probably in the can because you generally lose a little bit of that off of the beer engine uh, style serving. I'm really curious to know what you think about it. And uh, yeah. We knew Steve was coming out today and I checked out, I think he made a video on this beer. So if you're curious about how it turned out uh, before the can off the beer engine, definitely check out his channel, check out that video, reciprocate, like and subscribe, all of the above. We're all in this to, you know, just spread the love of craft beer. You want to pour it? Sure. Give it a pour. It smells great. Yeah, so one of the things uh, is that I did carbonate it to a relatively low degree yeah. because of that kind of classic way of doing things. So it might be a little bit flat. But so we'll English see. IPA. Is there anything else you want to share with the viewers in terms of how you made it? Sure, yeah, so basically, um, it is a series of uh, craft malts from Admiral Maltings that I used. Uh, a base malt there, similar to Maris Otter, a uh, low degree caramel malt, a little tiny bit of English, like roughly 120 crystal malt. Made it with uh, Bitter with Target. Uh, there's a Target edition at five minutes, uh, East Kent Goldings at 20. Um, and then it's a Whirlpool, actually, of Fuggles and East Kent Goldings. Um, and then I dry hop with two ounces of Fuggles as well. Made with SO4 yeast and uh, try to ferment it pretty low uh, to keep it kind of clean, but I think there's definitely a good amount of yeast character in Steve, that. Steve, you forgot to pour yourself some, buddy. Oh, it's for you. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Dude, I should say Fuggles. Fuggles is a great hop. We use Fuggles in uh, Twists, our milk stout. Hmm. And so, did you say it's dry hop with Fuggles? Two ounces of Fuggles. Yep. Yeah. It's great. I mean, those, those English hop varieties, those, those sort of noble, earthy, spicy hop varieties are not something that I've had in IPA in a really long time. <laughs> so it's, you know, sometimes distance makes the heart grow fonder. And when I taste this, it's really, really nice. I get that sweet, fruity, estery fermentation profile from the 04. I get Fuggles kind of galore. Mm -hmm. And I like that they sit, you know, when a beer is dry hop with Fuggles versus the hot side, the, the flavors kind of separate. And I kind of like that. You get the sweetness up front, but then you get the earthiness and the spiciness of kind of the Fuggles and that hop blend on the back end. Steve, this is a really nice beer. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. I think uh, in the can, I'm surprised it's kind of mellowed out a bit. Yeah. You huh? know, after the last time I tasted this, I, I recall it being more bitter than it is right now. I also recall it being um, a little bit more like orangey. 
Okay. When, when I tasted it initially, like an orange marmalade is the character I would describe it as. Um, yeah, I'm not, not getting that. Much, it's yeah. coming across more as a sweet, just a generalized sweetness, malt character yeah. in the background. But yeah, this is a this is a really nice beer, and it's a pleasure to get you, to meet you in person. And likewise, like I said, we're fans of the channel, so thanks for coming out. Thank you. All right, guys, that is a wrap. We had a ton of fun. For those of you who participated in this, thank you for going through the trouble. Across the board, very, very impressed with these beers, generally speaking. I promised that I would pick a favorite. I'm going with that Hellas Lager. That was a phenomenal beer. I really enjoyed it. Kicked the thing off just right. Crisp, appropriately hopped, really refreshing. I loved it. In terms of creativity, our friend Espen from Norway with that freeze distilled imperial style. Congratulations to you, that was super creative. We're gonna do this again sometime. Get subscribed to the channel. Leave your thoughts below in the comments. Check out the apartment brewer and we'll see you guys next time. Be good.